as we take a look at our starting lineup. Row number one, Kevin Swindell and the 71 of Damian Gardner. Darren Clayton and Tim Cading will start in row number two. Row number three on the inside, the Rocket, Jesse Hockett and the two AZ of Casey Schumann. In row number four, it's going to be Levi Jones and Ricky Gaunt. Row number five on the inside, former two-time Oval Nationals champ Bud Cading and the 83 of David Cardi. Row number six is going to be Corey Cruzman and Scotty Weir back here from the East Coast. Danny Sheridan, Showtime in the 18 Kittle entry on the inside of row number seven alongside Charles Davis Jr. And in row number eight, it's going to be Brady Bacon and Josh Ford. Row number nine, current point leader in the CRA Sprint Car Series, Tony Jones, and second in the points, Mike Spencer. And Jerry Coon starts way back in row number 10 alongside Dustin Morgan. The 1997 Oval Nats champion, Rip Williams, alongside the kid sensation 29 of Cole Witt. Troy Rutherford and Darren Hagen back in row number 12. Row 13 taking provisionals, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. alongside R.J. Johnson. And Dave Darlin, last year's winner, starts alongside Blake Miller in the last row. The Bulldog, Kevin Swindell, and the Demon, Damian Gardner, off turn four. Great flag is out. We are racing here in Paris. Yeah, Gardner got a great start. He got a jump on the outside. He's going to take the lead right off the bat. Tim Kading in that 10 car using the high line right around the top two guys, and he'll lead him down into turn number three here on lap one. Boy, this racetrack is really racy. You can run the bottom and the top right now. They've done a terrific job getting this racetrack ready. And heavy, heavy smoke off the right side hitter of Mike Spencer. Now that team did an engine change on the 50 car, and uh, he's still cruising around, probably going to keep the hammer down as they are three wide off turn number two. Yeah, and you can see the bottom of the racetrack after they reworked it a little bit much faster than it was earlier. Some of those slick spots gone. They're running two, three wide. You can see that 69 of Jerry Coons Jr. right in the middle of the racetrack, a little bit tight in the middle of the corner, Larry. That car catching the, uh, the tacky part of the track, kind of pushing up just a little bit. It certainly is, but you can see the guys running down the middle of the racetrack now, getting a great run off the corner and uh, giving a shot on these guys. Ooh, look at this, getting very close to the wall up around the top. Left front in the air for Mike Spencer, very hooked up here at the Paris Auto Speedways. Tim Cading is your leader, the modern day cowboy. Derek Clayton runs in second. He won one of the prelim nights. A little crossover move trying the low line off turn four, but TK normally runs with the wing, probably only run a half a dozen non-wing shows, getting it done here. It certainly is, you can see right here, as Clayton runs the bottom of the racetrack, doing a nice job. The Dixie Chopper battle flag for the second spot. As they work turns three and four, the Cowboy, Derek Clayton down low, the Demon, Damian Gardner, former CRA Sprint Car Champion, a lot of wins here at this racetrack, running for Jason Leffler in 2007. Good to be back in the pass. Well, Damian Gardner, he runs this racetrack real regular, so he knows exactly what this racetrack does. As the night goes on, he's chosen the top, and he's not moving off of that top. Darren Clayton has been one of the fastest cars all week long here at the Oval Nationals. A great speedy shot here in the front straightaway. You can see from the inside the race car how these drivers work, how hard it is in there, all the steering they have to do. And Dave Darlin having to start back in the 14th row, trying to climb his way to the front right there in front of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in that 21 car. Stenhouse all season long has been very exciting in the Lucas Oil USAC National Sprint Car Series, almost in the side there, the 15 of R.J. Johnson down the front straightaway. And you can see this racetrack really is racy right now. Guys running all over the racetrack. You can see that Darren Hagen went right to the bottom and went around Stenhouse, so it's a very, very fast racetrack. Darren Hagen out of nearby Riverside, California, has a couple wins here at the Paris Auto Speedway. Loves running here in front of his hometown crowd. He's got a lot of cars to pass to pick up the Oval Nationals win. Ricky Stenhouse there in that 21, working the outside groove. A good battle with some of the young guns here in USAC. Yeah, and that's a great indication of what this racetrack, how good it is right now. You can run the top and the bottom. It looks to be just about as fast one place as the other. Lap number 10 of the scheduled 40. Tim Kading out in front. Damian Gardner trying to run him down. We saw Gardner get by the 10T of Darren Clayton a few laps ago. It looks like he's pulling away. Yeah, Gardner right now looks to be the fastest race car on the racetrack. He's pulling up on Katie, doing a nice job, just getting a little bit better grip coming off of the corner and driving it right down in the corner as hard as you can go. Well, as we mentioned, Larry, Tim Katie coming from a wing sprint car background, so he doesn't really back the car in the corner, doesn't toss it in as much as some of these non-wing guys. You drive it straighter as it gets slicker, the car could be good. 
It's a definitely a different philosophy of the way you run a race car. Right now, Gardner is back in the corner, right there. Throws it back in now, drives in here, going to slide up in front of him, take that groove away. Kading, though, says, nope, I'm going to come back after you, but can't make it work. Nice Parasito Speedway slide job for Damian Gardner, your new leader out in front. He's got a couple car lengths on Tim Kading. Begins to pull away in that pace electronics, Team ASC number 71. We talked a little bit about him earlier. He got teamed up with NASCAR driver Jason Leffler, decided to chase national points in 2007 as Derek Clayton bounces off the fence there off turn two. Yeah, Gardner right now seems to have everything going his way. He's running right on the cushion. You can see that cushion up there getting a little bit deeper as they go along, though. That could be a problem later in the race. Back in the pack, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the Chevrolet Bass Pro Shops, number 21, Double D, Dave Darlin. And that blue and white, number 44, that red 93, that's Blake Miller, was quick time on one of the prelim nights. And the guy that likes the gutter rat line, that's the three of Rip Williams. Yeah, Dave Darlin standing right down in the very bottom of the racetrack. Looks like, though, he's not getting a very good grip right in the middle of the corner, and that's caused him some problems. Well, here at Parasado Speedway, you might think you're running low until Rip Williams goes underneath you. He's very good on that low line. Looks a little tight as he'll push up. Blake Miller will take the spot off turn four, but here comes the demon already in lap traffic. And you can see from this shot that these guys coming off of turn four run the top and the bottom, trying to find the fastest place for their race car. So it's Damian Gardner out in front in heavy lap traffic. He's got Tim Kading on his rear bumper as they work through turns three and four. Derek Clayton hanging out in that third spot. And not very often do you see guys like Rip Williams and Blake Miller or even Dave Darlin get lapped here at a place like Paris. No, you sure don't. But it's just proves such a problem for these guys up front because the guys that they're being lapped are sometimes right where they want to run. And it uh, can be a big problem for them. On board with Hammerhead, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. The battle back in the pack for that 23rd spot is again, Stenhouse had to take a provisional to get into the feature event. You see Dustin Morgan there, the Jeff Walker number 11 on the outside. Stenhouse, one of the picks to win the whole deal, but having to start deep in the field, gonna be tough to get to the front. Yeah, he's really, uh, it's a long way to go when you start that far back. Very difficult, a lot of traffic to get through. You got guys like Gardner running so fast up front, this makes it that much tougher. The first couple nights of the track wasn't as hooked up as it is tonight. It's again a battle for the lead just past the halfway point. Damian Gardner now working to the low line as Katie trying to get underneath him. The front wheels in the air, side by side in the stride. Well, see, that was the lap traffic. Gardner had to move down off of the cushion. And once he moved down off of the cushion, Tim Katie went right underneath him. Now these guys, oh, they bang wheels going down the back straightaway. USAC Sprint Car Racing at its best here at the Parasado Speedway is Darren Clayton. One of the Mopar Casey Kane entries on the inside as they go down the front straightaway. As we ride on board with the modern day cowboy. It's in turn number one. Now touch from Kevin Swindell and Clayton upside down. Comes to a stop on the racetrack, red flag conditions. And we saw that one from the start. Boy, you certainly did. You can see Swindell slide up the racetrack. He tried to do a slide job, didn't get up far enough, banged right into him, wheel to wheel, and over he went. A slide job gone bad as Darren Clayton seems to be okay. We saw him getting his helmet off there, trying to take his helmet off as the safety crew works their way over. We'll take a look at the general tire instant replay, Larry. And Wow, looked like Swindell didn't have any room to make that pass. No, what he, he, once he hit it, he bumped into that cushion so hard he just got upside down. No, no place for him to go. There wasn't a thing that Darren Clayton could do. Clayton had been running the top pretty much the entire race, and Kevin Swindell really just gave him a wheel there with the right rear, and the victim of circumstance there for Darren Clayton as he comes to a stop, and uh, now it doesn't look like he's too happy. Looks like he's going to walk down there and have a little word with Kevin Swindell. Yeah, he's going to say, what was that all about, man? Because... Uh, you can tell, not a very happy expression on his face at this point. Well, we talked about him earlier. He picked up a prelim night win there in the Truckers 24-hour r racing entry. And I uh, uh, see his crew chief right behind him, Jim Whiteside. And uh, they really, really mesh really well together. Darren Clayton really is uh, working well with that 10 team. And uh, it's just unfortunate uh, an incident like that happens as uh, he's still cruising down there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh, that's Sammy Swindell. So, so Darren Clayton goes in there to talk to Kevin. It looks like Sammy jumped in on it. Now some of the Mopar teams jump in. We see Davey Jones down there trackside. Some of the USAC officials trying to pull him apart. And now Davey Jones going at it with Whiteside. Wow. We, we see Shane Cottle down there as well. Yeah, the crews, everybody gets involved. As, uh, Son of the world famous Brent Kading. Of course, his grandfather, Howard Kading, third generation driver trying to win his first Oval Nationals. 12 laps to go. Here comes little Schumann. Goes right down to the bottom. Bud Kading follows him down there, and 
Jim has some problems up there. Got up into that cushion pretty hard, and uh, Schumann went right on around him. Casey Schumann, he's run the low line all three nights here at the Parasado Speedway as we go on board that DRC chassis working pretty good on that low line. He is your new leader. Yeah, you can see he's got that left front right down on the very inside, just way up to the wall. In every corner, he puts it right down there on that berm, trying to get a hold of the little, little wet dirt is left down there. For the last few years, as Casey mentioned, we heard from him earlier tonight with just 10 laps to go. He's been learning the trade back in the Hoosier State. Very smooth on the racetrack as we now see the 99 of Brady Bacon got by the demon, Damian Gardner. He's done a terrific job. He started clear back in 15th position, steadily moved his way forward, and he could be the fastest guy on the racetrack right now. Now the battle for second spot, the Dixie Chopper battle flag. Two Canings going at it. Bud Canning around the outside, the 10 of Tim Canning bouncing off the wall. So Bud Canning takes over second spot. Yeah, Tim Canning got into that cushion, got up over the top of it, lost a lot of spots right there trying to get that thing gathered up and back on the racetrack. Casey Schumann, still your leader. Bud Kading now to second, a former two-time Oval Nationals champion. Nobody has won three Oval Nationals. Tony Jones has a win back in 2000, and he's trying to run down the kid, Cole Witt. He broke his collarbone earlier in the year, came back after only one race, and is still trying to win the championship. Bud Kading in the black 29, trying to hold off Brady Bacon in the blue and white number 99. It looks like Kevin Swindell's back in the pits. Love. Well, with no breaks, they were going to try to make that run with the last couple laps here, but he's not getting any points. Kevin Swindell done for the night. So Larry Kevin Swindell, a pretty exciting night for him, ending up not the way he wanted to see us back in the pits, but his teammate Brady Bacon looking for a top three. As here comes the Rocket, Jesse Hawkins, slide job city over in turn two. All right, he made that work. He slid right up in front of him, cut off the groove, and made it work. Right now, though, Casey Schumann is just pulling away from everybody out on the racetrack. And it looks like Bud Kading, though, giving it everything he's got, trying to catch him. Wow, what a neat deal it would be to see Casey Schumann pick up this win. Would be the biggest win of his career. Not even his father, Ron Schumann, has won an Oval Nationals, and he works the low line. He's been down there all three nights. Now BK trying the low line, trying to run him down. Well, this isn't a full-time ride for him. He only runs this car a few times a year, but right now he's got that thing hooked up and running right around the bottom. The same place he's run all week here. Let's go on board with Casey Schumann. Once again, he hasn't deviated. He's run the same curve, the same line, all race long, right around the bottom, up to the top, down the straightaways, but right to the bottom through the corners. Laps winding down as Brady Bacon bat to the bone on the back bumper of Bud Kading down the back straightaway, right up on the fence. There's your top three, Casey Schumann to your left, Bud Kading and Brady Bacon. You can see everybody runs the bottom down in three and four, but up in one and two, that's where Kading is making his move. And it's very difficult to run that cushion up there. What's coming off? You're so close to the fence. A little bit of an error right there, and you're in big trouble. Looks like caution lights are on. So Bud Kading was running down Casey Schumann as the yellow lights come on. And I'm sure either one of those drivers wanted to see. Oh, it looks like it's the 10 of Tim Kading. So our early leader, Larry, into the fence off turn four, and it looks like already climbing out of the ring. Two laps to go as a little shoe brings him off turn four. Green flag is out right to the inside of the racetrack. He's been running down there all night long. We don't expect him to go to the top, but BK's working that top shelf. Yeah, and it wasn't much guessing going on. Schumann, you knew, was going to go to the bottom, and you, so you knew that Katie was going to go to the top to try to get an advantage. Those two guys have pulled away from everybody else, though, got a great restart. Casey Schumann down into turn number one. Bud Kading on the outside as they work off turn two. And Schumann, a pretty good run off turn two there. He gains a couple car lengths on Bud Kading. Now, Kading again went right to the top down there. Hasn't gained anything yet, so we'll see. Schumann so far really been a master at the bottom of this racetrack. White flag is out. $30,000 on the line as Casey Schumann off turn two. Here comes BK around the outside. Kading will take the lead off turn two down into turn three. And Bud Kading takes the lead on the final lap, looking for his third career. Oval Nationals win, and BK gets a big one here at the pass. Unbelievable. Schumann has been almost perfect on the bottom. It looked like he missed the groove just a little bit, and Kading got a great run on him, went right on by. How about that? Bud Kading, a last lap move, picks up the win. Casey Schumann, Brady Bacon, Jesse Hawkins, Scotty Weir, your top five. What a win for the whole BK Motorsports team. Danny Sheridan came from the B-Main to finish in sixth. And take a look at this. Tony Jones all the way from 17th up into ninth.
Good to see Cole with the youngster rounding out your top 10. Hagen, Stenhouse, Miller, Davis, Morgan, and Jones, your top 16. And there you see the celebration for the first three-time winner of the Oval Nationals. He is a happy guy. Chucking that helmet.